Well, hello, parents. My name is Mr. Duran. I'm the parent coordinator for MS390. Today, we are bringing you a special workshop with Ms. Levine. She is our speech therapy, and she's coming today to talk to us about what she does and how she works with our students. Ms. Levine, all yours. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you to all who joined and to all who are listening. I am Ms. Levine, one of the two speech therapists at MS390. And today I'm here to present to you about what is speech therapy in middle school. So questions that I will be talking about today are the following. First off, what is speech therapy in middle school? Why is my child still getting speech services? What specific areas does speech therapy address? How do I maximize student growth? And finally, what can you as parents do at home to help your children reach their speech goals? Now, before we get to those questions, I just want to give a brief introduction. So what is a speech language pathologist, an SLP? That's what we're called. So I am a professional with an ASHA certificate of clinical competence in speech language pathology, just so you see the acronyms that are used in my professional title. Um, that's a fancy way of saying that I am a speech therapist. Just wanted to expose you and show you what those acronyms are. And I am a primary caregiver, care provider of speech and language services. So I help, um, my job is to help your children learn how to better communicate. Now you all might be thinking, those were a lot of words, so I understand you help with communication, but okay, so what are you doing with my child in speech therapy? And now we're about to explain what that is. So what is speech therapy in middle school? So our the primary function or the main purpose of speech therapy is to assess, plan, and implement individualized intervention programs for students to help build functional skills, don't worry, I'm going to explain, to be able to effectively communicate their ideas academically and facilitate maximal curriculum access. What does that mean? Help the students get the skills that they need to do as best as they can in school. So, Again, I'm going to get even more specific, but we're moving we're moving that way slowly. Um, so I do intervention for reading and writing mostly. All right. So I work with students on their reading and their writing skills. And that includes vocabulary. So learning new words. Um, syntax means sentence structure. OK, so mainly reading and writing. Um, and in the recording, you'll be able to read more specifics in the second paragraph if you want to see the specific areas, but reading and writing skills. Um, sometimes articulation, like how to say the sounds of letters, but, but in middle school, that's often already mastered. So it's mostly reading and writing. And sometimes I work on pragmatics, which are social skills, because, um, because speech therapists we help students, we help our clients with communication, which is broader than just reading and writing. So also sometimes social skills, depending on the student. Next slide. So back to that question from the outline slide, why is my child still getting speech services, right? Because a lot of our students and your child um, has been getting speech services in elementary school for several years by now. So why do they still need speech in middle school, right? What are you, what am I working with them on that they still need their services? So I wanna show you a picture. It has a lot of details on it. We're not going to go through most of the details, but I'm showing you this picture because it helps to illustrate the point I want to make. This is called Scarborough's Reading Rope. It is showing us that on the left-hand side, there are a list of skills that somebody needs in order to be able to read, to achieve skilled reading, which is on the right-hand side, okay? There are many skills a person needs to have in order to read a paragraph that they're given or a book or any sort of 
thing they have to read in ELA class in middle school, right? Skills they need in order to look at that, read it, understand it, and be able to analyze and answer questions. So with the analogy of the rope, so these skills, when acquired all, when they're all woven together and used together, then a person's brain is able to um, look at a paragraph, analyze it, um, and be able to answer questions about it. And so a lot of my students have difficulty in different categories in different in different areas that I'm showing you here. And so I work in those areas, like you'll see on the left, whether that's vocabulary or um, or language structure, okay, or um, word recognition, like seeing a word, being able to read it and understand what it means. Um, these are things, these are complex um, processes, right? These are things that are hard to do and a lot of students struggle to do them. So my job is to help them develop these skills so that they can do their ELA assignments and their math assignments and their science assignments and get the grades that they want in school. And achieving skilled reading in middle school is very important because students need to be able to do this once they get to high school. So I am trying to help them get those skills that they need, help them catch up in the areas that they need so that by the time they get to high school, they're able to do the assignments that their teachers give them. Now let's talk more specific, okay? This is when, so I just, in that picture, I explain the kind of skills that I help the students, that I help my students achieve. Now you're wondering, okay, so I get these categories, but what do you do with my child in speech therapy, right? I'm sitting in my office right now. What do I do with my students when they come to my room for their speech sessions? So depending on each student, right, and what their speech goals are in their IEP, um, I either work on the one of the following or multiple of the following categories, okay? So first of all, with some students, I work on reading skills, okay? Some students still struggle with that in middle school. Um, so we practice what sounds the different letters make. And this might sound simple, but actually some of the same letters can make different sounds depending on what letters are around them. And we work on reading comprehension, right? Which is reading information, understanding it, um, and being able to identify key details, which is like main idea. I teach my students the strategy of using context clues, which is if there's a sentence you don't understand when you're reading a paragraph or a story, you use information surrounding that piece to help you understand um, that sentence. I use my own activities sometimes, um, but I also sometimes work on my students' class assignments. I'll say, bring your iPad. You know, your teacher told me you're having trouble with this assignment, or you told me you're having trouble with this assignment. Let's bring it with, with you to the speech room, um, and let's work on it, because that way we're targeting, we're working on your speech goals, and I'm also helping you to try to do well on your assignment to help your grades, um, to get your grades to where you want them to be. And sometimes we work on math because actually a lot of math is reading because you have word problems. So sometimes I help the students with their math assignments if they're having trouble or if the teacher is asking me to help them with that. Um, and then we work on writing skills, um, which includes grammar. Um, and also some, I have some students who, when they write, it's hard for them to think of ideas, right? Um, so in class, you know, the teacher will say, write a paragraph about this. And then they just write down three short sentences and they can't think about what else to write. So I help them expand their writing and think about how to get more ideas. And finally, vocabulary skills, which is learning new words, um, but also teaching strategies of how to try to understand what a new word means. And this is also very practical for the students' assignments because I'll 
they're reading books all the time and you know they'll see a word and they don't understand what it means and then they'll say i don't understand what the book is talking about now and they get confused so i help them give i help give them strategies how can you look up a new word right um what's a good I, I teach them a good dictionary online, and I'll show you that in a, a few minutes, a really good dictionary website online that will give them definitions that they understand. Okay, and then also with vocabulary, we I teach um, word roots and prefixes and suffixes, which are groups of letters that mean similar things in different words. So that will help, that helps the students to recognize what a new word might mean based on these um, these letter combinations that they'll recognize. For example, in the word decide, right? If we say undecided, if we add the two letters, the un to the beginning, the u and the n, that means not decided, right? So that's a prefix. That's letters that come at the beginning of a word or unspecific means not specific. So that would be a pattern where I would say to the students, if you see a word that starts with un, it means not, and then what the word means. So it's the opposite. Just one more other quick example of a word root. So the root spect, if you see spect in a word, it has to do with seeing or looking. So for example, spectacles, right, means glasses. Um, because it's something you use to see. Also inspect, right? The word to inspect a house, let's say, um, means to look at it closely. So I teach the students, if you see spect, then that, that means, oh, that word must have to do with looking or seeing. I can go on talking about these all day, but we're gonna move on um, because of time. So back to our second to last question. How do I maximize student growth? Sorry for the noise in the hallway. So how do I help the students do as best as they can in speech therapy is collaboration, which is working with other teachers in the school. And this is a very important part of what I do is I don't just work by myself with the students in my room. I'm always talking to their teachers and saying, how is the student doing in this area? Are they getting better? Do they need help with something else? What assignments are you doing now that you think I should help them with? And this is really important because if I didn't work with the teachers and I just did my own thing in my room, I only see the students two times a week um, for 40 minute sessions. So I'm only seeing so much. So I need to ask the teachers and say, how are they doing the rest of the day, right? Sometimes the teachers notice things that I don't see. And sometimes I notice things the teachers don't see. So we talk a lot to help the students do as best as they can. And finally, that last question, what can you as parents do at home to help your children reach their speech goals? Right. And building off of the last slide where I was saying that I work with the teachers, it's also important for you as parents um, to try to help out as well um, at home. Right. Because your children are in school for a certain number of hours every day, but they're at home a lot also. So if you can and I'm going to give you some ideas, but if you can also try to encourage um, your children, you know, to practice their reading in different ways at home, that is also going to help them um, get better at, um, in, in, at a quicker pace. Okay, so I put together um, a pretty long list of resources. Uh, most of them are free of resources that you can use at home, that your children can use at home to work on their speech goals. Um, the first six are different websites. Um, some of them have games that help um, that help the participants work on their reading skills or vocabulary. For some of them, you need to make accounts, but most of them are free. Um, I always try to use free resources. And um, number eight is current events. So if you hear about something that's happening in the news that you think would interest your child, um, I do this with them a lot, then I, I pull up an article and we read it together and we talk about what's going on. So there's actually, um, here, you can go ahead. 
Um, and I know it's hard. I know once you know, your children get home from school, they don't want to think about school. They just want to break. Um, and I get that. I know this is challenging, but if you feel like you can encourage your, your, your children, um, then, you know, just to try say like, oh, here's, um, you want to try this website, try these games. Um, or at the bottom, I have number nine says Jeopardy Labs. Um, it's a website that I use with them a lot. It has pre-made Jeopardy boards of lots of different topics. And you might be thinking, how does Jeopardy help them with reading? Well, actually, there I have the students, they have to read the questions that come up. Um, and sometimes we come across new vocabulary words. So it really does help them. And it's a fun, competitive way. So they're when I play this with them, they're not thinking, oh, I'm working on my reading. This is so boring. They're like, oh, this game is so fun. I want to beat my classmate. Um, and then they end up practicing their reading and having a good time. Um, and I also use the game Bananagrams a lot with them. For those who are familiar, it has um, letter tiles that we use in all different ways to target goals, spelling, vocabulary. Um, and, you know, it's a fun competitive way to do that. You can use Scrabble pieces for it also. Um, and then this game Chronology, which you can look up, it's available on Amazon. I use that also where you, you read about interesting things that happened in history um, and the kids actually like it. And then we end up looking up information and then reading more online. Um, and again, these, if it's a topic that interests um, your children, my students, then more motivation means they're going to to want to learn more. Um, and Bananagrams and Chronology are not websites. Those are physical games um, that if you have them at home or if you're interested in getting them, they're just um, good games I would recommend that target um, speech skills well. And finally, number 12 is wordsmith.com, which is that dictionary website I mentioned earlier, um, which I love to use with students because if they see a word they don't know, so I teach them, right? If you see a word you don't know in class and you're confused, look it up. But then what's the problem? They look it up and they don't understand the definition because on Google, it uses other hard words in the definition. So this website, um, you can choose to get a beginner's definition, which uses simpler words. So then they understand what the definition is. And thank you all so much for listening. Um, I know that was a lot of information, but I think it's important. I just want to share that we're going to put the websites, uh, that, that slide, I'm going to put it in the description of this video so that way you are able to click directly from the video and always keep it as a reference. Share it among parents so that way you will have um, resources to use when your child says, oh, I, I'm bored, I have nothing to do. Yes, um, and thank you so much, Mr. Duran also um, for all of his support. Um, and parents, I'm here for you. I'm here to answer any questions. My email is um, right below. We'll also give you that. Um, if you ever have any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out. This is a partnership between me, the parents, uh, you guys, and the teachers. So um, again, thank you so much all for listening, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Yes, we have a question. Go ahead. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good just morning. Good morning. I just wanted to ask two questions. So one, what happens when you have an L student? and will feel more comfortable speaking the native language. Do you have any of those websites or are those websites mm -hmm. available where they will be able to do the translation? Yes, thank you for asking. Great question. Um, so actually, there is a bilingual speech therapist in our school who works with students um, who are more comfortable, um, who can only speak Spanish. So personally, all the resources that I use are in English, um, but I can easily get um, a list of resources for someone who would um, only, who would want to use um, in Spanish, absolutely. So we're gonna add those topics to the, to the description of the video so everybody will have access to it. Absolutely. Oh, thank you very much.
Thank you for your time, Ms. Levine. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. I know a lot of the parents will too. Thank you, Mr. Duran. And thank you to all the parents who are also taking the time to listen to this and to come to it and showing that you care. Bye, everyone.